The Baycock Groundwater Model video is presented by the Barrington Area Council of Governments. In this video, you will see a representative model of the estimated distribution of hydrogeologic materials throughout the Baycock study area. Baycock classifies the soil materials by their average hydraulic conductivity, or the ability of the soil to transmit water. Aquifers shown in light blue are the water bearing units through which water readily flows and from which the Barrington area pumps its water. Aquitards, which are shown in dark tan, slow or retard the flow of water. Aquacludes in light tan act as a barrier to water flow. Now let's view a video of the three-dimensional model of materials. Baycog is located in four counties shown in red in northeastern Illinois. Roads and a yellow outline of the Baycog area are shown on this map for reference. The surface elevation of our study area is shown. Note the brownish areas are for higher surface elevations. The highest elevations are along the western boundary and in the middle of the area on what is known as the glacial moraine. The yellow, greenish areas are low surface areas. To the left of the glacial moraine is the Fox River Valley and to the right is the Des Plaines River Valley. The objective of the, of the Baycog study was to define the location of the aquifer materials in the unconsolidated or glacial drift materials located above the bedrock. This shallow aquifer system is where most of the municipal, business, and private residential wells are located. Baycog used average hydraulic conductivity values, a rating of how readily water flows through a given soil material, to map five-foot layers of the shallow aquifer system. The green demonstrates areas that are at or above ground surface. Dark blue is the shallow bedrock, which is also an aquifer in this area. As described before, light blue is the shallow, unconsolidated drift aquifer materials. Tans indicate materials that slow and inhibit the flow of water. The top layer of the model is at an elevation of 950 feet above mean sea level in the northwest corner of the site, and the lowest portion of the unconsolidated materials in the study is along the eastern boundary at about 500 feet above mean sea level. We start removing the layers, one five-foot layer at a time, with pauses every 50 feet to give you a feeling of the vertical distribution of the aquifer materials in the area. Aquifer materials are exposed as soon as the layers begin uh, to be removed. This is expected because of the close proximity of some of the aquifer materials to the surface. The model moves below the surface in the west, leaving the rest of the model to the east above the ground surface, covered in the green shade. At an elevation of 900 feet above mean sea level, the shallow aquifer materials are exposed in the northwest, and we see smaller patches of the aquifers in the south and east. At 850 feet, the aquifer materials in the northwest are dis diminished, but a large north-south tending area of the aquifer is exposed that roughly defines the Fox River Valley. At 800 feet, there is less aquifer material overall, but it extends almost continuously from north to south. The north-south tending green area towards the west is the Fox River Valley. The 750-foot layer shows the course of the Fox River Valley and its associated wetlands in green, or still above ground. Aquifer material, shown in light blue, is closely associated with the Fox River Valley. At 700 feet, the dark blue of the bedrock is exposed along the western border. Aquifer materials are still distributed in a north-to-south pattern, but the line is beginning to shift toward the east. At 650 feet, exposed bedrock is seen in the western third of the study area and along the southern boundary. Aquifer materials are spotty and shifting to the east. At 600 feet, over half the site is exposed bedrock. The presence of light blue aquifer materials lying directly on and adjacent to the dark blue areas indicates the presence of a basal aquifer. The basal aquifer can be an excellent source of water and is present to varying degrees throughout the study area. The drift aquifer materials are almost gone at 550 and 500 feet above mean sea level. Once all layers are removed, we'll rotate the model and build the 5-foot layers back up.